This video is brought to you by HeyBoxing.com. Want to get paid for promoting boxing-related content on your Instagram? It doesn't matter if you have 50 followers or 50 million. Start earning today at HeyBoxing.com. Um, it really hit home to get Sean Porter's announcement. Yeah, you know, you touched on that and it just popped in my mind. It really, it really hit home, man. Um, you know, um, salute. Salute, Sean. You know, you had a tremendous career. You did many great things. You were a great rival. Rival, you know, you've been my number one rival for many years. Um, in and outside of the ring, suit game, everything, baby. You know, um, um, so, mad, so mad love and, and many blessings to you and your beautiful children in your future. I'm curious, because we're bringing up Sean and his retirement. What did you make of that fight that he had with Crawford? Um, you know... He started off good, you know, he started off in um, typical Sean Porter fashion, like some of the commentators were saying. Uh, I thought um, Crawford really looked like he was just trying to land counters. He was whiffing uh, quick check hooks, missing them, whiffing uppercuts, missing them. Uh, and then as the rounds went on, I saw both fighters slow down and when Crawford actually slowed down, he was doing better because he was actually able to hit the target now. When he was, when he was being flinchy and reactive, he, he wasn't as accurate. When he settled down a little bit, and um, because they both settled down because five rounds went by, five rounds went by and you're naturally going to slow down to a degree, uh, his, his timing got activated. So he, his, he, wasn't, he wasn't flinching and he was placing. And I started to see that shift around fifth round, sixth round. And I thought to myself, uh, Crawford's going to take the second half of this fight. You know, uh, then Sean really uh, didn't seem like he was in the best shape. You know, you asked the uh, commentators from ESPN, they say that was the greatest performance in Sean Porter's career. And I beg to differ, you know, not just because I fought Sean Porter, but I just believe that his performances against Thurman, his performances against Errol Spence, and especially the Spence fight. I mean, uh, it was right after the Pacquiao fight, which was a tremendous fight in 2019 of the summer, and I thought it was going to be a hard fight to follow up when it comes to entertainment. And I know Sean was capable of it, but we've seen what Sean did to Danny, we've seen what he did to Ugas, and we know that sometimes he doesn't put it all out there. But he did against Spence, and I thought that was one of his best performances of his career, even though he fell short of victory on that fight. Um, so, and I pre-predicted that if Crawford was going to get him, it was going to be a step back left uppercut. That was based off of sty Styles and how Sean's constantly leaning in, and it really played out just like that. I was a little, I was a little surprised. I was a little surprised, but then I wasn't surprised because. I already predicted uh, Sean f consistently was doing what he was doing without making any changes and adjustments. And for Crawford, it allowed him to settle in and, and capitalize, especially in the later rounds when Sean's legs were not um, as, um, as sharp as they were in the opening four or five rounds. Um, it was a great performance by both fighters. Um, I think uh, Crawford, Definitely had to battle it out. He had to endure because that's the thing about a Porter fight is you're not going to get to the end. You're not going to get that victory if you cannot endure what Sean Porter dishes out. We, we saw Kel Brook endure. We saw me endure. We saw uh, Errol Spence endure. So the beauty is that he did make a statement by being the first person to stop Sean Porter. But for whatever reason, it wasn't terrifying um, to all the commentators from ESPN, you know, they said every welterweight's moving up to 54, you know, it was not scary, all right, it was not a rated R movie, I was not frightened, okay, um, if anything, I still believe that I present more than what Sean did, of course, we know Crawford is a talented individual, we know that there's an uncrowned king in the welterweight division, but that's why it's uncrowned, don't go crowning anybody yet, you know, let's, let's make these fights happen. I know you, you did an interview or I saw like a news thing that you, you do want a, a Crawford fight. You said, you know, get a fight in and then at the end of the year you would like that. Is, is that still, you're looking at that as your plan to like go with Crawford at the end of the year or do you think him and Arrow will end up fighting in, in during that space of time? So I obviously cannot stop other people from um, putting fights together, right? But 
if Thurman could have it Thurman's way, what it comes down to is getting back in the ring, getting an exciting fight, putting on an exciting performance, showing people um, what it looks like to watch Keith Thurman in the ring after so many years to remind the people who Keith Thurman is and what I bring to the Walter Wade division. And then from there, it's Ugas, Spence, and Crawford. It's all the champions. I don't have a belt right now. I want a belt back, yeah. you know? So all three of those guys are legitimate. I think you would agree that they're legitimate for a fight this up and coming summer. If I fight in the first quarter at the start of 2022, I can take a fight by July. Thank you so much for watching this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV and give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.